Welcome back to our demo on FTD Intersite Cluster with ACI Multipod. As we mentioned, we have four endpoints. They're paired up in their own pods. This is uh, showing you their IP addresses on the data plane. These two units will be talking to each other. So it's host one to host three and also host two to host four with their respective addresses here. If I take a look at our FTD cluster comprised of two 9300s, G chassis in pod two and H chassis in pod three. Here I am going to connect using FXOS console into each of the blades. In my G chassis here, module one is the master unit. And from there, I'm gonna get into the diagnostic CLI just because I have a little more flexibility there. So here, if I display our cluster info, we can see that we have all the units in the cluster with unit 1.1 being the master. Just to follow through with that, I'm gonna log into all other units as well. And also in chassis G in pod three, Now with all six units having access to their console, I am able to take units out and show you some more flexibility with resiliency of this solution itself. If we take a look at our FMC here, we still see six units in the cluster. Everything is pretty much the same as we discussed in other videos. So let's first open up some connections here. What I'm gonna just show you that I have ability to do pings between host one to host three here. Everything is green. If we just take a look at the address in this script, it does show me the address of this host here and same in the opposite direction here. I do have ping working there as you can see and just validate also pod three pair of hosts as well. We have ping working between those. What we'll do now is open up some TCP connections. So I am simply going to open an SSH connection from host two to host four, log in and We'll display top just to send some traffic continuously there. Before I open the pod 2 connectivity, let's just find that connection. We'll do a cluster exec show con and I'll just uh, reduce the amount of output here by including the stars for the units and PBR for our interface. Here I can see three actual connections recorded across our units. We have a connection with uFlag, that's the owner that's in the unit two and our blade three. And then we also see two connections with Y designation. One is a local backup, which is in the same chassis two. Uh, that is chassis H and also we see just the regular Y which is in chassis G uh, basically the global backup for that connection as well so those two would be used as far as the failures as they uh, occur with our cluster units uh, those units would be picking up and using that information to continue the service uh, in this uh, environment itself so let's open up the second connection. On the right side here is the pod three that we open the connection. We'll do the same in pod two. So 
So these two connections will serve as our test connections to make sure that connectivity is in place. The way that uh, we can show the connections again here, now we are showing uh, another connection which is up in chassis one, chassis G. And here is the source port that is indicated for that SSH and used from the host itself. Basic uh, stuff here, but we do have again a local backup that you can see here in unit uh, one three. And we also see for that same connection, a global backup here uh, that is in unit two one. So let's start our resiliency testing. And what we'll choose to do is remove the units that own these connections and then see how those connections adapt to other local units themselves. So let's take a look at our connection here that's in pod two and it is owned on unit one two. We will proceed to remove that unit from the cluster and see what happens to our connectivity. The way that we do that is we execute cluster remove and here we can indicate uh, unit 1, 2, which is this particular unit here. As we do that, the unit is taken out of the cluster and I'm not seeing any problems on the connection. The top is still active. And if we take a look at our connections themselves, we now see that connection with that source port has moved to unit 1.1. One, one. So we're still within the same pod 2. We just moved to a different unit in that chassis, which is a different blade. Now we're going to remove unit 1.1, one, one, which in this case is the master. So we have to do that from a different unit here. So I will just use another unit here and do cluster remove unit unit uh, one one which is master now that master role is going to move to a different unit and we'll see that um, happen live here as we perform that action we're still seeing that the connection uh, is alive it had a little bit of the pickup but it continued on this tcp connection and looking back at our connections now we have to copy the same cli that we can use here to display our connections themselves So here, looking at our collect connection, searching for source port 50,000, we see that the unit 1.3, the last remaining unit in pod 2, has picked up that connection and owns it. And what we'll do is we'll remove that last unit and see how the connection is now, by the fabric, redirected into pod 3 and those remaining units live in pod 3. So here, looking at that connection, that's a unit 1.3, which is this particular unit here. We remove the last remaining firewall in pod 2. And looking at our TCP connection still, it is alive and well without any issues. Uh, just uh, showing the cluster info here. This is the new master. It's a unit uh, blade one in chassis two, chassis H, and it also has two remaining slaves, these two units also available. If we take a look at who owns these connections now, we can now see that uh, these two connections are now both owned by unit 2.3 and other two units are basically backing them up uh, locally. We no longer have a global backup for these connections because we had lost all the units. 
just as a part of this demo as well to enable both uh, local and global setup here, I did uh, actually had to do additional configuration within the cluster. I enabled site redundancy and director localization on the um, uh, cluster configuration that you see here. That is done through the flex config inside FMC. That is our demo. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it.